Welcome to the IDKD Refresher Series, Musculoskeletal Diseases. I present you a case with acute thigh pain during sports. I have no disclosures and I'm Anaga Parker and I work at the Harasgras Tegnes Hospital in Bergen, Norway. The clinical information was that this was a patient in his 40s, mid 40s, and he experienced acute pain in the left posterior thigh during sports. There was no previous trauma or no previous illness and no other additional information given to us. An MRI was requested the question of muscle rupture or tendon pathology. In our hospital, the sequence we do is axial T1 and T2 fat side axial, as well as coronal store and sagittal T2. So this is the video of the T2 fat set image of that series and we see here there's an area we see here this area with white areas and high signal on T2 weighted images we also see here high signal in the muscle this is lateral this is medial so this is the biceps muscle this is the semimembranosus and this is the semitendinosus so again we look at it again there is high signal here along the tendon, but the tendon actually looks intact. There is also some hematoma. And then there's the coronal series. So what do we see? Well, we see high signal in the posterior part of the muscles here, and this can be seen in a long area, more than 20 centimeters. We do see a slight hematoma. So the question for us is, how serious is this? Will this heal by itself and do we need surgery? So to understand this, you have to understand the anatomy of the muscle tendinous junction. So the muscle consists of muscles with epimyosium, then it's broken down in fascicles with perimyosium. Then we have the muscle fibers with the endomyosium. And the last bit is the muscle fiber with sarcolemma. Then we have a myofibril. And for the tendons, it's usually a tendon with epitenon, then with endotenon, and then we have fiber and then myofibril. Some tendons also have um, tendon sheets, for instance, the biceps or um, the flexor tendons of the hand. They have tendon sheets to keep them in place during function. So the most important thing is that the muscle fibers connect to the tenocytes at the level of the sarcolemma. So when you have a rupture, it is not an end-to-end -end attachment and it slides along the tendon and the sarcolemma. So it's a longitudinal rupture. So the tenocytes attach the muscle sarcolemma at an angle. We have a pernation angle and the rupture is along the longitudinal direction along the axis of load. So we have a direct trauma that can cause a transfer rupture, but usually during sports, when you have a rupture, it's along the axis of load. Then we have the length of rupture. It's not so important, even if it's 20 centimeters, but the gap between the sarcolemma and the tendon, that's ind very indicative of the time to heal. That's the most important thing to look for. The wider the gap, the longer the time to heal. And hematoma, it does not actually increase sever severity or tell us how severe something is, but you can report it. But the most important thing is the gap between the tendon and the muscle. So if you look at the case we have, I usually use the T1 weighted images to look at the muscle anatomy, and I just look at T2 for the high signal. So this is a part of the semimorosis muscle. And further down, we also had some affection of the semitondinosis, but the biceps was intact and there was no pathology. Um, there was no bony avulsion, although I have not um, taken any or shown you any x-rays. So if you go through the images again, slide by slide, in the beginning, there's just some fluid. Then we see the intact conjoined biceps and semitendinosis um, tendon. And just next to it, we have the semimembranosis, which is high signal in it and around it. 
but the actual tendon is intact all the way down. And here we also have some edema in the muscle. So I would say that this is a rupture at the myotendinous junction of the semimembranous muscle just below the osteotendin junction point. If you look at the coronal image, we see that the gap at some parts is more than five millimeters, which means that it'll be a long time to heal, longer than expected maybe, and this has to heal before the patient can start to train again. And in this case, there were no bony avulsions. It is, however, very important to remember the radiographs, especially in younger patients, because this is a patient who had exactly the same kind of symptoms, but this is a bony avulsion, which you see very clearly on the x-ray, and this has to be repaired. So if you want to read some more about this, we have the muller wolfart paper from 2013, which is a really good paper explaining the muscle injuries and the type of classifications and how to approach it, as well as a um, recent paper from radiology, which also is very good for reading more. And thank you for your attention and stay tuned for more cases from the IDKD. Bye.